Thank you. So good morning, all of you. My name is Swarup Ermalkar, and today I'm presenting uh, pen testing Swift applications for fun and profit. Uh, quick disclaimer, all the views are my own. I'm not the employer. Uh, a brief introduction of me. Uh, I work as senior security engineer. Uh, my work is end-to-end uh, -end product security, security of AWS, uh, the web application, mobile application. Uh, I'm OWASP by Good Project Lead. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, you should go and visit this link. It's igodab.com. Uh, I'm a frequent speaker at the security conferences, and I have presented my paper at uh, many conferences, including the recent one, AppSec Israel, uh, AppSec USA 2017, uh, BrewCon, Secti, HitCon, and many others. Uh, I'm one of the top five researchers at the Cobalt. Uh, Cobalt is a pain testing as a service platform. Uh, I also do bug bounty, uh, and I have been acknowledged by many other companies for reporting high security security issues. And I'm a frequent speaker at NERL and open source security community in India. Uh, I hold a couple of certifications. And if you want to tweet about this uh, talk, you can use this Twitter handles for UPSY. Uh, I'm also author of the book, uh, Learning iOS uh, Penetration Testing. Uh, it's uh, one of the most popular book on the iOS app pen testing. So today's agenda is, uh, we'll start with why to care about the mobile security, uh, what, like some case studies like of critical findings. Uh, then risk to your mobile data, and what is the OWASP iGoat project. And then we will see some iGoat architecture and then a couple of demos. OK, uh, before starting this talk, I want to make this very interactive. Uh, how many of you are security professionals? You can see your hands like this. OK. And how many of you are developers? Good. So don't worry, I have a talk for uh, both of audience. This talk is both for pen testers and the developers. So uh, the first is why to care about uh, mobile security. Uh, the thing is, right now you have your smartphone in your pocket, and it has everything. So right now you have the financial applications, which is handling your uh, credit card data or financial uh, data. You have the uh, mobile application where you are attached to your credit card. Uh, at the same time, you also have the healthcare application where you book the appointment with the doctor, you discuss your allergies. So you have the applications which are handling your healthcare information. And you have the social networking application like Facebook, Twitter, and many other. And also the gaming. So your mobile, right now you have your mobile in your pocket, which is handling your healthcare, financial, personal, and all other sensitive information. If you see the stats, nowadays the time has changed and most of the traffic is from the mobile application. And if you see the traffic is more than 50% is from your mobile applications and not the, uh, your uh, traditional web applications. And uh, when I talk with the managers and like, uh, who handles the mobile security, they, uh, they say mostly like we are securing the backend because we have lots of tools. So you, because backend is web, right? And most of them are catering to the back end. So if you see the current scenario in the mobile app pen testing, like, like it can be anything, Android or iOS, uh, most of the applications are hybrid application where your back end is web, app, web part. And if you see, there are lots of tools for web, uh, web application assessment. We have uh, tools for CICD integration. Uh, we have the DevSecOps where your security is like automated. But when we talk about the uh, mobile, like the front end code, like uh, app on the device, we have very few tools. And that's the reason security is more concerned, uh, security fo focus is toward us the back end. And there are several free and commercial tools for back end assessment, and front, front end is one of the neglected part. And that's the reason like we had like critical findings, and that I'm going to explain in next uh, next slide. So I have done like do pen testing a lot. Uh, my more focus is toward us mobile applications. So these are some critical findings from uh, after pen testing 200 plus uh, mobile application. So the first case study is very interesting, where I was able to pawn the AWS of enterprise just by using iOS application. So when when we do the iOS application assessment, what we uh, get is we get some app store link, and it's a black box assessment. So all I, all I got was the iOS App Store link. I started digging with that. I downloaded the application and, and decrypted the application using Clutch. So that's how standard uh, pen testing methodology. And after that, I dumped the classes using Class Dunzi, and I found some references to the AWS. And I, I found something suspicious. 
And then I perform like uh, uh, loading the binary into Hopper disassembler. So like we have the IDA Pro, it's like Hopper for your iOS binaries. It's, it's basically for disassembling the binaries. Uh, if you never use, you should use uh, Hopper. It's one of my favorite also, and it's a, a very easy to use for iOS binaries. So okay, after uh, so when I started disassembling, I found some references to the this ARN AWS. Now people who are working with AWS uh, might got the idea. Okay, so uh, I found okay something like very suspicious. I found uh, AWS references when I uh, disassembled the code. And there was something AR and AWS. Uh, with that, uh, I started dumping all the keywords in the strings uh, command, and I gripped with the AWS. So whatever I, uh, whatever the strings I had, I started getting with the AWS. And finally, I found the hard-coded access key and secret key in the iOS binary. And uh, so next thing, I got the keys. What I can do with them, right? It depends on the permission. So I started like, what are the permission I got? And I was able to uh, list all the IAM users of that particular enterprise. Because it was misconfigured in the AWS as well. The keys which were there, the first mistake was hard coding the keys. And second mistake was the permission issue. And then I was, I just for the proof of concept, I launched one free tier EC2 instance and I submitted the report. But can you imagine getting those uh, access key into the wrong hands? Someone could launch just hundreds and thousands of EC2 instances over a minute, and they could use for Bitcoin mining, and it could lost, uh, it could uh, be a million of loss. Okay, the second case study is also interesting, uh, where I was able to access the upcoming features of the application. So uh, when uh, when we get the iOS application, we also uh, do the static analysis. We do the analyze the local data storage. And during that analysis, I found that uh, application is creating the database and it's storing some QA account credentials. So when you are doing the, if you are familiar with like security reporting, like uh, reporting the issues, if I report such issue, the companies will say, oh, uh, we are not interested because it requires the physical access to device, it requires a sandbox bypass, so we are not much interested. So I didn't report that, I kept with myself and I started looking more like, can I convert this issue into something more high severity? Or can I make it uh, having the more impact? So I started, uh, I stayed motivated. I started looking for more things. I found references to few endpoints which are not uh, listed on the program. And then I was able to use the QA account credentials to log in into the endpoints which are like not listed. And I was able to access their all upcoming features like so applications has a release cycle, like the uh, quarter one, two, three, four. So I was able to access their all upcoming features uh, just by using that QA account credentials. And when I reported, and they were extremely happy to know that. Uh, so if you see that these are like very few case studies, I have more like when, uh, uh, like there are so many cases where mobile uh, application is causing issues um, and it's, it's impacting on the confidence and integrity of your applications. So what are the risks to your mobile data? Have you, how many of you seen, seen this tweet? Uh, well, only one, two, three? Yeah, so recently Pangu uh, demonstrated the jailbreak for the iOS 12, like which is one of the recent one. Uh, there was recently also exploit for the like, I can send you one URL, you will open in your Safari on the iPhone, and your phone's phone will be automatically restarted. It, it would be restarted forcefully. Uh, if you see the jailbreak industry, uh, this website, canonjailbreak.com, the jailbreaks are available for almost all the iOS version. If you see this 11, uh, iOS 11.4 and the iOS 12 was recently demonstrated. And, and it's not complicated thing like a past, Nowadays, this jailbreak, jailbreaking is very easy once the jailbreak is available. So it, it, this jailbreak is for iOS 10. I can send you one URL. You can click on that, and your phone will be rooted. So while developing the applications, don't consider that like but jailbreaking is a very difficult thing, and we don't consider that. Uh, uh, there was a vulnerability. Uh, uh, there was a loophole in iOS 10. I uh, from iOS 10 to 10.3.3 where we were able to actually brute force the pin. 
So the, there was hardware uh, which was uh, designed in China where you can just plug the wires into your iPhone and you can actually brute force the pin. So it's not very difficult. I can get your, I can easily bypass your pin. I can get access to your phone. I can also jailbreak your device. And after that, I can dump the keychain. I can do whatever I want to do with your device. So that's the reason uh, you should pay attention to your mobile security. And I'm also, uh, uh, if, you are, if you don't know this, I'm also uh, leading this project OWASP IGOT, which you can use to help your help securing uh, your applications. So what is OWASP IGOT? OWASP IGOT is a learning tool for both pen testers and developers. Uh, it's basically a lesson-driven uh, application where you can just, uh, where you can explore and learn the challenges in the iOS security. So this is the application in the, in the left side. You can see the uh, demo. And it's basically, uh, the lessons are like, uh, for it has different lessons. You can check in the left side, it has like, uh, binary protection, the jailbreak detection, and lot more. And so basically, it uh, it introduced to the problem. Then you uh, exploit that, and most importantly, at the end, you learn how to defend that. Like if you see uh, when I discuss with developers, they understand the problem, but when they are securing the application, they end up with lots of stack overflows, the blogs, and they don't know where to go. Right? It's it's, it's a common problem with the developers. So what we have done is, uh, this is for both developers and pen testers. Uh, for each of the vulnerability, we have also given the how to protect that particular uh, vulnerability. So iGoat architecture is a client-server architecture. It will teach you the both vulnerabilities, like client-side and the server-side. Uh, we, uh, we have made it very simplified. Like we have the one Docker image. You can just start it. And we have a couple of uh, uh, servers on the AWS. So it's like. Uh, it's an application on your like uh, iPhone or iDevice, and then there is a server on the a server on the cloud. Uh, recently, the release release for the Swift because most of the companies are moving from Objective C to Swift, and there was need. So we recently released a Swift version of iGoat, and we have both versions in active state, so you can use uh, Objective C and Swift as well. So based on your development, you can use any of these applications. And if you see, uh, the, uh, so I, as I said, I do lots of bug bounties, I do lots of pen test, and I get, I learn lots of things in the iOS pen testing. And what I do, I add it to the iGoat so everyone can learn about that, both the security people and the developers. So if you see that, it has a lot more challenges, uh, right from the reverse engineering, then IPC flaws, uh, like cloud misconfiguration, jailbreak detection, the cryptography uh, issue. Then we have the challenges for encryption key management, like how to handle the encryption key while uh, dealing with the mobile applications. Uh, we also have the server-side vulnerabilities like the uh, ST misconfiguration, OAuth vulnerabilities, and payment gateway, and uh, many other authentication flaws. So it is both like client and server-side uh, vulnerabilities. And the best thing about the iPhone is it runs on all the iDevices. Like if you have the MacBook, if you have the iPod, if you have iPad, you are good to start with. Like, if we don't have any restriction, it's compatible with all the iDevices. Uh, it's a quick demo. So uh, uh, if you see, uh, it's available on the GitHub. Uh, you can just clone the project. And there are only two steps, starting your client and starting your server. And you are all good to start with the iGoat. So, uh, so in, the, in, the, in the left side, uh, I'll be running the server. That is a Docker image. And this is the Xcode. All you have to do is just click on the play and the project will be executed. So this is Xcode, by the way, if you don't know. So similarly, you can use uh, your iDevice as well. And you can see that with the one click, the app is up and running. And in the left side, I'll be starting the Docker image. So this is a server, and this is the client. And we are all good to go. Like, So if you're a newbie, if you want to start, uh, with the iOS pen testing or iOS security, uh, you are all set to start with this. So I guess, uh, so th that was a demo, and we have a, a very good team. Uh, we have the developers from all around the world. 
the developers are connected to this project. So whatever is happening in the development and security, like I'm from security, other people are from development. We, we come together and we make this project to uh, up to date with for all the developers and security professionals. Yeah, I guess that's uh, all for this video. Uh, that's, that's this session. Uh, uh, do you have any questions?